Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tarek Massoud. I'm a professor at Harvard University's John F. Kennedy School of Government and the faculty director of the Kennedy School's Middle East Initiative. And it's my extreme pleasure to welcome you to this third installment in our series of conversations with artists, writers, and musicians conducted by senior fellow James Snyder, the executive chairman of the Jerusalem Foundation and the former director of the Israel Museum. Now, I'm going to cede the virtual lectern to James in a second to allow him to properly introduce this evening's guests, the gifted filmmakers Tawfiq Abu Wa'il and Joseph Cedar. But before I do, I want to say a few brief words about the series of which tonight's event is a part. When James and I dreamt up the idea for this series of conversations with leading figures in the worlds of art and culture in the Middle East, we were not thinking primarily of devising a pleasant diversion from the grim political realities that consume so many of us who write and think about Middle Eastern politics. Instead, we believe that by being in contact and communion with artists and writers and intellectuals, we would not so much escape the political as arrive at an expanded sense of the political and at a new awareness of the possibilities for transcending those grim realities, informed by the unique perspectives that artists uh, bring to things that we in the baser world of politics tend to take for granted. We started this series with a conversation between James and me, in which James reflected on his career as an art historian and as the pioneering director of one of the Middle East's most magnificent museums, and in which he spoke very deeply and movingly about the concepts of place and rootedness as sources of both conflict and comity. In the second event of the series, James convened an extraordinary conversation about the invention of monotheism in ancient Egypt with the biblical scholar Moshe Halbertal and Anthony Ross Constanzo, the countertenor who played the alleged founder of monotheism, the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten, in a recent production of Philip Glass's opera about the pharaoh. One could not fail to emerge from that latter conversation without an appreciation both of James's gifts as an interlocutor and also of the magnitude of the Middle East's singular contribution to world civilization, the belief in a single all-powerful God. Today, James brings to us a conversation with two tremendous filmmakers, a Palestinian and an Israeli, who recently brought to the screen one of Israel's and Palestine's most searing episodes, a pair of horrific murders of young Jews and Arabs that gripped that part of the world in the summer of 2014. How these two gentlemen, these two filmmakers from two different worlds with identities and allegiances so often pitted against each other came together to tell a story as fraught as this one. Well, I will now yield the floor to my friend James Snyder to explore that and other questions this evening. James. Tarek, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I always enjoy listening to you describe what it is that we're doing in this series. And actually what makes it so interesting, not just for those who are listening, but I think also for the two of us. It is a pleasure this evening to have with us Taufik Abu Wael and Joseph Cedar in order to talk about film and television as mediums for exploring cross-cultural narratives narratives that can be competing and converging in Israel and Palestine, and doing so in a way that can be about strategies for accuracy and sensitivity when dealing with subjects that can be so complex. Joseph and Taufik were the collaborating writers and directors for the HBO series last year, Our Boys, uh, Tarek has described it, some of you may remember that Joseph actually was our inaugural guest for our series last spring when we talked about our boys specifically as an introduction to the series and as a way to explore the challenging complexities of the Middle East, but not through politics, rather through a creative lens and not just a creative lens, but through a personal lens. And actually the end of that conversation last spring was the segue to asking Joseph to come back, this time accompanied by Taufik, so that we can really listen to the two of them speaking about these subjects together. Just to set a backdrop from my own perspective, I want to go back a decade or so 
actually to 2008 in Jerusalem at the Israel Museum when we were celebrating Israel's 60th anniversary by having across Israel six museum exhibitions, each of which was devoted to a different decade of art in Israel. At the Israel Museum, we were lucky enough to get 1998 to 2008, then the most recent decade in art in Israel. We felt that that was a kind of watershed period because 1998 was a very important moment in the creative culture of Israel. Israel had turned 50, and really it became a kind of first opportunity for creative figures, for artists to unplug from the burden of the history of the founding of Israel, and to use that as a moment of opportunity to be somehow less burdened by that history and to treat it more personally, with more self-reflection, in a more self-effacing way, and in a humorous way. And it really began a period of, of, of blossoming creativity in every discipline. A lot of artists then were just in their 30s. They were just coming of age. Actually, Taufik and Joseph are exactly of that moment in the creative culture of that place and time. And they were growing then to be practitioners, particularly in film, also television. We're going to talk about both film and television. And I think having them together is a really unique opportunity to reflect on Israeli and Palestinian sensibilities emerging from that time and growing from that cultural platform. Joseph was born in New York. He came to Jerusalem when he was six years old. He did his studies there at Hebrew University. Then he came to the US and he was at NYU. Taufik was born in Um al Fahim, which is a Palestinian town on the edge of Israel, adjacent to the West Bank. Both have focused throughout their own creative developments in the notion of very deep and challenging political and historical narratives but each of them treats those narratives from personal, social, and sociological perspectives. For Joseph, a critical moment was Beaufort, his film from 1906, which was about Israel, Israel's withdrawal from Lebanon in the year 2000 and relating his personal experience to that political moment. In 2011, his film Footnote was different in many ways. It wasn't so deeply political, but it was about the idiosyncrasies of academic life and life on the street in Jerusalem. And it was a kind of film that couldn't have been more local, but at the same time, it was universal in the contagion of the humor with which it treated its subject. Taufik also has had films that have been complex in that same way, Thirst in 2004, Last Days of Jerusalem in 2011, which really produced personal narratives within the political narrative of Arab life in Israel in those moments. The two of them came together with Our Boys. In a way, Our Boys really embraces all of what I've described above. It's a kind of perfect springboard for the discussion that we want to have. It is about an historical moment. It is about the tragedy of the murders that occurred in Jerusalem in the summer of 2014 that triggered the start of the Gaza war then. So of course it is intensely political and it is told from the intensely political but also personal perspectives of fathers and sons not of Arabs and Jews per se, but really and rather about fathers and sons. Muhammad and Hussein Abu Khadir, Yosef, Yosef Chaim ben David and Rav Shalom ben David, his father. These are sons and their fathers. These are boys and this is a story of tragedy. And yet it is a story about boys and their fathers. Our focus this evening really will be on our boys as a springboard to talk about Israeli and Palestinian film and television today, to talk a little bit as a sidebar about the phenomenon of serial television today. And I think it would be impossible not to put all of this into the perspective of where we are today here in our world and in this time of COVID. 
to begin, I think we can just show the promotional trailer that accompanied the debut of Our Boys last year, and let's watch that now. See it. חוצים לנו שלושה ילדים תמימים. ללא כל פרט מידע עומדים כאן אלפים. גם בשמחה ולינה ובשלה. יש פה מדינה שלמה שבטוחה שהם בחיים. אני מפחד מהיום שאחרי. מה יקרה שיגלו שהתפילות לא נענו? קרה משהו? כן. אבל לא תמיד יש לי מספיק כוח. You know, in, in preparation for this evening, for the first time since seeing all of our boys last year, we watched the other night the first episode of the series. And I have to say that really it was a different and in a way more powerful experience given what's going on around us here in the U.S. now. The combination of the challenge of COVID, the challenge of the election that we've just gone through, the political and social unrest that we're feeling here informs the series in a different way. And perhaps as we go on, we'll talk about that. But first, I want to begin by reflecting a bit on these last 20 years, being the 20 years that Taufik and Joseph have come of age. And really in, in 1998, so just over 20 years ago, arts from Israel were beginning to go global with, with photographers like Adi Ness, who came to be known in an iconic way out here in the world, uh, with Eitan Fox's film, Walk on Water, and even just within Israel and Palestine, Syed Kashua's Avoda Aravit, Arab Labor, which was really about taking a different and in a way more humorous look at the challenges of Arab culture in Israel over the preceding 50 years. And then that's within the last 20 years, within these last 10 years, television from Israel has gone global. People know about Shtisel, people know about Fauda, these are series that have been seen all over. And what was really fascinating in a way about Our Boys was that it was an HBO production for international distribution done in Hebrew and Arabic with English subtitles. So it was really taking that phenomenon out into the world in a big way. Taufik and Joseph, each of you came to Our Boys really from film. And, and I'm interested to begin here by having each of you talk about what brought you to Our Boys, why you signed on for this. Uh, I came because Joseph called me, so <laughs> he, can, <laughs> he can start. 
Yeah, I, I should say that we have a, a third partner, uh, someone, uh, um, a great television creator named Chagai Levi, uh, who's known uh, for probably being the pioneer of Israeli television formats um, being exported outside of Israel. He created In Treatment for HBO. Uh, so the, the, the way this evolved is uh, HBO wanted to do a series about um, about the summer of 2014 in, in, in our area. They approached um, an Israeli TV station, Keshe, who approached Chagai Levi, and Chagai approached me. Now the mandate we had was to, um, to tell a story that takes place against the backdrop of this very dramatic summer. And for those of you who, who don't remember the details, the, the, I guess the, the summer starts with the abduction of three Jewish teenagers uh, who were kidnapped on their way home from school. It took three weeks, or there were three weeks where um, what happened to them was unknown. And after three weeks of an entire country searching for them, uh, their bodies were found. The day after their funeral, um, riots broke out all over uh, Jerusalem, riots by Jews who were calling for revenge. And that night, the body of a young Palestinian boy, Muhammad Abu Khadir, was found in a forest uh, in Jerusalem, uh, burnt, the body was burnt. It took three days or four days to find out who the murderers were. And then five days after his body was found, uh, a war erupted between, or another war erupted between Israel and, and Aza. So that's the summer. Uh, now, within those historical events, there were many stories that we could focus on, and we did try to focus on different stories, but ultimately, um, we, we decided that the Muhammad Abu Khadir murder uh, was most challenging for us, most interesting for us to dive into. It was the one story that we felt um, we, we raised questions that we really didn't know how to answer. Uh, and once we decided that that's our story, um, the killing of Muhammad Abu Khdir, focusing on his killers and on Muhammad Abu Khdir's family, uh, we knew that we needed a Palestinian partner. And that's when I, I called uh, Taufik. Um, I should say that as, like, as opposed to uh, at least one of the TV shows you mentioned, um, this kind of collaboration that assumes that one can only tell a story from the inside and that trying to tell a Palestinian story but from a Jewish sensibility is problematic even before you begin uh, can be taken for granted. It's not easy. Um, and and Tauf I mean, Taufik uh, joined us, but I'll let him describe some of the, 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 the hardships or the dilemmas that he had to face. Yeah, uh, thank you, Joseph. So I, I can continue. The, uh, when he called me, I, I didn't know at the beginning what he's talking about. And uh, I remember I traveled with him and with Haggai, and uh, I found myself uh, visiting Abu Khadir family. And it was like a big crew of Israelis. I, wa I was the only Palestinian in the crew. Uh, and I remember the moment uh, uh, the Hussein called his his wife Suha to introduce into into let's see what into introduce introduce her to to us, and I could hear her voice that uh, like I can't do it, I can't give my story to to Israelis, you know that I I could hear the, her voice and. And Hussein just whispered her, he, he told her, they have a Palestinian here is going to tell the story. And it was just uh, a feeling of relief uh, on their faces. Uh, I, at that moment, I, I didn't understand what I'm going to do. And, uh, but I felt just a big responsibility because I felt that they're giving me the responsibility to tell their own story. Uh, and uh, this is how we started, you know, the, after that I had, I, I had uh, a lot of meetings with them. 
uh, a very deep relation. Uh, it was not easy to to do that because uh, this summer is is a taboo in, in also in Palestinian society in Israeli society, but. Uh, uh, the killing of Muhammad Abu Khdir, uh, especially the way of killing him, like burning him alive, he's a kid, like uh, 16 years old, it, it made a shock in Jerusalem. It's like, uh, I can say that Jerusalem uh, is different before the killing uh, uh, of Muhammad Abu Khdir and after the killing of Muhammad Abu Khdir. It's like uh, uh, the pressure, the depression, because living in Jerusalem for Palestinians is very, very tough, you know, because uh, you, it's kind of living, uh, kind of apartheid, uh, being Palestinian inside Jerusalem, because you are not really a citizen. Uh, you don't have the, uh, the same rights, like the system pressure you all the time. And the killing of Muhammad Abu Khdir, it's like explore all this depression and uh, 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 pressure. Uh, so it was difficult, you know, to accept the idea that uh, Palestine and Israeli making this story, uh, and uh, we had a, a lot of pressure from uh, Palestinian uh, activists, journalists, uh, politi pol politicals, you know, pressure on me, on the father, on the family, not to make the serious and. Uh, uh, I admit I had uh, a very tough uh, moment uh, not doing the the show because I, I never deal with a direct uh, political story. But at the end, you know, the the power of of the personal relation that I had with Joseph and Haggai, this is was the 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 roots who, who, that I felt I felt safe. I felt that I'm, I'm in, a, in a safe uh, place of doing this uh, series. Uh, I had, uh, uh, I, I, you know, me and Joseph became uh, really good friends after the series. Before that, we just knew each other, you know, as uh, colleagues. But we, we, we just uh, uh, started to know each other and to, uh, to contain each other, you know. I, 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 I see how Joseph can contain me, and I, I can contain his uh, his vision. So this is uh, this is uh, how how it started. You know, it was a very difficult uh, uh, to do the show and to write it and to discuss and argue and fight. But at the end, you know, for me, it was uh, it was uh, it's not only the pers uh, the story is personal because the personal thing started uh, with us between us. You know, we could I. I, uh, Joseph inspired me. I, I believe I also inspired him. So uh, this, uh, this relation, you know, between, uh, uh, between people, you know, uh, give the, the feeling of, uh, to be safe, to, to be, uh, have a self-confidence of what you are doing because you know that we are, you are with the, with the good people. They are, uh, they can hear you. They understand you. They they give you the the space to to tell your own, own story, uh, and I believe that we succeeded to do it. Taufik, you, you did succeed, and you know, in what you've just described, you've touched on so many points that I really want to return to one at a time, and and the most touching is that. All of you, the three of you agreed to tackle this very complex narrative. There was a consensus that the story itself, the reality of it was a story of moral degradation. You all wanted to come out of this with a message, with a moral message. And you took something political, you treated it in a personal way. And the end game was that you have a very deep relationship between the two of you, among all of those of you who worked on this. And I really want to touch on some of that a bit more. And I want to start with a point that you've discussed before with us, which is that your objective in doing this was to be honest and accurate. And the notion of having you and Joseph be on the team so that the perspectives would come from the Israeli side and the Palestinian side in part was to make certain 
that you would have that kind of approach of honesty and accuracy to deal with the story. And the story, of course, has, it's a true story. You also had to make some creative interpretations to the story in order to deliver your message. So can you say a little bit about what it was like to take the facts of the story and interpret them. It's not about fact and fiction, but it's about giving the, the facts of the story in a way that could deliver a message that was important to you. Maybe I'll, I'll try to give an example. But, um, we'll, we'll demonstrate some of the complexities here. Um, so, uh, at the center of the Jewish side of the story, there are three killers. Uh, one of them is 29 years old, and the other two were 16, minors uh, in, in legal terms. They were his nephews. Now, of those two minors, um, the one that we decided to focus on in, in, the, in the series, we call him Avishai, that's not his real name, is um, ha received at the end a more lenient punishment. While his cousin uh, received uh, life in prison, his uncle re received life in prison, he only uh, was sentenced to, um, to 21 years. And although he was, in c he was convicted of murder, it was determined that his responsibility was less than the other two. And we, I mean, I, I think he was probably the trigger for us deciding to tell this story from the Jewish side. We saw um, a video of the, the enactment of the killing, the real video, which was part of the investigation materials. And there was something about this young boy that was just incredibly puzzling. Um, he, was, he, he, he was an awkward, stuttering young boy, clearly very smart. Um, and it, it just didn't fit any of the expectations you would have from, from someone who took part in this terribly cruel murder. So that, that, that created a question mark that we felt is, is, is our mission to solve in, in this story. Now, one of the things that comes up, and this is where um, the collaboration with Taufik became very complicated, is that, um, so there's the, the legal definitions of what his responsibility is. But then when you're constructing a story, you have to characterize this, uh, this character and how passive he is. In, in, one, in, in one scene or in a few scenes, he's described as a leaf in the wind, very easily influenced. And the way you, the way you characterize him dramatically affects his moral responsibility for the murder. And in every scene that he's in, we have to make a decision of what kind of, what kind of person is he? Does he have the strength to resist the influence of his uncle? And in that sense, how, how responsible is he? Um, and as we were developing this and writing it and, and working towards the beginning of production, we found ourselves kind of forgiving him, like saying, okay, his cousin and his uncle are vicious murderers, but he, Avishai, who we hope that audience will in some way identify with, is actually a victim himself. And we found ourselves reaching this conclusion, not by decision, but just by casting an actor and, and finding ways to humanize him. And at a certain point, Tofik uh, stopped us and said, you know, <laughs> wait a minute, you know, not only can I be a part of a project that is going to humanize one of these killers and reduce his responsibility, I think you're giving him, like, this, you're, this is too easy, what you're doing. And this resulted in us trying to ourselves reenact the murder and understand from Avishai's own subjective experience what it took to be him in that, in that circumstance. Part of it was us actually trying to abduct a young boy uh, and understanding how much will came into the final act. Even if he wasn't part of the act of killing, we changed the way we understood his responsibility. And if, if, for those of you who have seen the show, that awakening or that, that gradual awareness of what the, his responsibility is became the dramatic journey of the Shabak agent, Simon, who investigates him. He also starts out by thinking, there's no way this young, sweet boy can be a vicious killer. But midway through the reenactment, he understands that, okay, all his expectations were wrong. 
did you feel at any point that you needed to fictionalize the story in order to make sure that the message that you were delivering from Joseph, from your perspective, Taufik from yours as well, in order to deliver the message that you hoped that the series would deliver? Uh, you know, uh, 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 when you are making a story, trying to tell a story, you don't think about a message, you know, you just, you want to tell a good story to, uh, with good, good characters that you uh, uh, have feelings, you care about them. Uh, I can say, you know, it's, um, uh, it was a very sensitive issue. How can we uh, 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 create, you know, uh, uh, not, uh, you know, uh, not because it's uh, uh, it's a real character that's still alive. Uh, especially, you know, in my, if I speaking, uh, I'm speaking about the uh, the victim family, uh, and it was an issue. You know, how uh, how much you can create, you can uh, uh, make it fiction. Uh, for me, it was just uh, the main issue is to keep the dignity of the family of uh, Hussein Abu Khdair and Tzu Abu Khdair. So uh, this is, was the red line for me to, to create a story and at the same time to keep their dignity and their child dignity. Uh, at the beginning, I remember it was like, uh, uh, we start to write and it was like uh, uh, a realistic uh, scenes. Like you don't have a story, you know, a family with a child. Uh, it's like, uh, impressive scenes is uh, seen you know with no story uh, and i felt you know uh, like stuck with myself because uh, okay what you can tell here okay you're sitting the ramadan you are eating he's outside he's not he's inside and i remember one day i spoke with joseph and he he just started to tell me a story about uh, his uh, children uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I can't I can't tell the story about uh, about this uh, that you know that uh, he told me about his uh, his little child that he blamed her that she eat a fruit and uh, threw it and he, it makes him angry because you know she she doesn't appreciate uh, the the things that he buy and he blamed the little child that she did it. Uh, and she felt bad. And after I don't know one month, the on the table, the big girl admit that she did it, not the little girl. And it was like a twist in the story. And during he telling me this story, I just could just started to see the the Bukhder story. And how, this is the way how it came all the story with the with the machine uh, that he blamed Muhammad that he broke the machine. And you discover after that, after he, he, he after his murder, that his big brother uh, broke the machine, and he just admitted after. So it was, um, uh, you know, this is kind of of things for me. It was so exciting because uh, uh, this is the way that you. I felt, you know, that I found the story. I can't uh, make it fiction, and still, you know, it's a uh, it's a story. Uh, it's this special story didn't happen, but you know, it's similar to the atmosphere and I can uh, do it uh, uh, in a dramatic way with, uh, with development, you know, with uh, giving also uh, a story between a, a father and his two sons, you know. Uh, and it was, for me, it was one of the moments that I felt, you know, I can uh, make fiction from the uh, Abu Khdir, uh, family. Uh, the story, uh, and you know, it was also to how to keep the sens sensitivity of the uh, Joseph uh, spoke about it. You know, it was like uh, at the beginning when they found the the body of Muhammad burned in the forest. You know, in Israel, it was like uh, everybody spoke about that he's a gay, that probably was killed because he's gay, uh, and his family killed him, and it was something you know like. Almost everybody in Israel believed for at least four days in this story. So it was also an issue that it was part of the, the story that we need to deal with it. And we need to tell this story and, you know, to be very, very sensitive because, you know, this is not our issue. Just we are telling the story. 
so it's yeah it was uh, all the time to to check yourself you know to in the one side you you want to create and to to tell a good story on the other side all the time you check yourself uh, you are doing good good you you don't uh, hurt anybody you don't hurt the family and this is what's the way you know to like uh, all the time to be with the uh, imad al with uh, the i would say your hand, your hand on the pulse you yes. know you know tawfiq you just gave those were two perfect examples of exactly what we're talking about in the dynamic of the relationship of Muhammad with his father, and also depicting Muhammad as a full character, as a full personality, where you needed to elaborate on fact, such as you knew it, but also you needed to be responsive to his family who are, are here and who were there. Yeah. How was that dynamic in working with Muhammad's parents when you were outlining the story in the ways you've just described? Uh, I was uh, in contact with them all the time. I told them every episode was going to be. I, it was like I was so honest. I told them also the Palestinian side, how it will be, also the Israeli side, how it will be. So uh, uh, I told them everything all the time. Uh, they trust me, you know, they trust us. We also, uh, Joseph also meet them uh, uh, and we spoke together. So it was a, a trust relation because they had a lot of pressure from outside not to do it. But at the end, you know, they, 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 they could look at our eyes and to see that we, we are going to make, uh, you know, to keep the honor of the family of Muhammad uh, to... Uh, to tell a good story and to uh, to bring it to you know to a, a world platform, uh, so uh, it was a lot of pressure from outside. But between us, it was uh, really a, a a close and good relation because it just was about trust. Can you describe how they felt in the end? How they felt about the story when it was finished? Uh, it was very hard for them to watch it. And I, I knew it from the beginning that it was uh, very hard. And I know that when they watch, uh, uh, they started to watch the first two episodes and uh, they couldn't stop crying uh, because it was like to, to live their story uh, again. Uh, and it was very difficult for them to watch it. So I, I, I believe they, they didn't continue to watch the series. But I know that, you know, the... Uh, uh, they, f you know, they feel good about the the making of the series. You know, their pain it's like uh, it's endless. Nothing can, you know, really heal their their pain. But at least how they ca uh, the experience of making uh, this uh, series, they feel good about it. You know that it's really it's it's uh, uh, that it's brought uh, the, their own story. You know to to the world in a good way that give them uh, at least, you know, a little bit of good feeling. You know, you both talked about the political pressures in advance of producing the series. What about the political responses afterward? You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, Joseph, yeah, was uh, in a very difficult situation after, <laughs> and Haggai, yeah. Yeah, Joseph, speak about that for a moment. Okay, so we, um, the, the basic choice that we made in telling this story to focus on a Palestinian victim and three Israeli killers, when we could have easily uh, chosen to tell the story of three Israeli victims and Palestinian killers, that choice um, is controversial and it, I mean, when, while we were making this choice, it, was, it wasn't really something that uh, we deliberated on because it was clear that figuring out how such a cruel murder can come out from within us felt like uh, a, a worthy artistic uh, journey to take. One that really we, we didn't know where it would lead us. On the other hand, dealing with the, the victimhood on the Israeli side, uh, while that has its place, we felt that is the story that most Israelis already 
experienced. That was a story in, in the media um, and, and it's, it's well known. Um, and without taking away from our ability to feel the, the pain of that tragedy, we thought that investigating the killing, the killers and the killing um, was, was a more serious dramatic challenge. When the show came out, um, and the way these shows are released, at least in HBO, um, the first episode um, immediately triggered uh, a, a, an uproar against us. How dare you take um, our story of victimhood and, and reverse it so that we're actually the perpetrators and not the victims. Uh, I think later on, as the series progressed, people who got the whole scope of the story realized that what we were doing was relatively balanced in that sense. But uh, the first week or the first two weeks, um, we were attacked in a, in a very, in, in a very serious, serious way that I, I, I usually shake off these attacks, but this one was, was more difficult because it was coming from bereaved parents who felt like we, we took their narrative. And I, I, I still can't say with certainty that um, we were right to do that. It, it is what we did. And I, um, I, I, I'm still troubled by, by that. Uh, the only thing I can say in my defense is that it came from a sincere need to touch something that, not, not for the provocation of it, but the sensitivity itself felt like it, 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 it warranted um, a few years of our lives to, to, to look into this story, whereas the other option uh, we, we just wouldn't have made. So that, that's, that's our response, and I, I think there is a legitimate argument to, to be made against us uh, saying that there is another narrative to be told here. And when, when you work on a story, you end up deciding on a specific narrative, excluding all the other options. Um, so we did exclude other characters, or there are characters that could have been at the center of the story, and they're not. Well, I... I was in Israel at the time, and I remember there was a lot of, uh, there was very vocal criticism against what you chose to do, and your response, in my view, was great, because it was exactly about delivering a moral message in response to the entire narrative. How you chose to get there was your, your creative process all of which was fine. And what it did was get more people to see the series and to understand the message that the series was delivering. What was HBO's response? I've actually not asked you this before. So a HBO were extremely involved in the nuances of, of the dramatic structure of the story, like justifying the motivations of each character, making sure that each episode is structured so that um, it works dramatically. I, I think that the, uh, the political sensitivity on both sides of the story was not something that the executives at HBO were, were I, they may have been aware of what we were telling them, but the, the idea that Taufik is, is in a very real way risking his life by collaborating with us and that we're breaching a, um, a, a pact that we have with our, with, with our family members by telling this story, which is, seen as, as washing dirty laundry uh, outside. Um, I don't think HBO knew the extent of, of, of what that meant. It wasn't part of, it wasn't part of our working relationship at any, at any rate. It wasn't their intention in getting the ball rolling for this, but from the conversations we've had, and also with Tarek, I have a feeling that this was a very central part of why you took why the two of you took this on. I think Tarek, I, I think you had a comment on this or a question on this. Uh, this is fascinating. No, I, you know, the, 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 I wanted both Tofi and James to, uh, to, and Joseph, sorry, to talk a little bit more about the decision not to really cover the, the initial murders, right, of which the murder of Muhammad Abu Khudir was. Uh, uh, allegedly a, a, a re, an act of, of revenge. And I, I understand the, the reaction in Israel that you're describing, Joseph, that, you know, because you did not tell this story of victimhood, uh, of, of, of Jewish or Israeli victimhood. But you did tell, in choosing to focus on Muhammad Abu Khudir, 
you did tell a story of Jewish humanity, right? So the, 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 the narrative, the thread in your story is how could one of our own have perpetrated an act as horrific as this one? And so, you know, Simon, the, 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 the investigator, the, the, he is, you know, constantly grappling with this question. You have the noble attorney who is prosecuting the case, who again is a Jewish Israeli, but who views this as a heinous crime. You have many voices in the, in the program that disavow this. There are no Arab voices in the show that disavow the murder of the Jewish children that precipitated the murder of Muhammad Abu Khudir. And I guess I want to know wh why. So, so in, in a way, I do think there was a there was dramatic possibility there, but maybe it was more for Tofi than for you. But I, I would, I would want to reflect on that a little bit. And wh why don't we hear somebody in the sh in the program? Why don't we hear a Palestinian voice? Um, condemn the murder of those Jewish youths with the same vehemence that we hear many Jewish voices condemning the the murder of Muhammad Abu Khudir. Uh, okay, okay, you touch, you know, the uh, one of the big issues. It's like uh, making this show because uh, it's a question of point of view. Uh, uh, when you when we we start the show, when the story is starting, you know. Because uh, from Palestinian point of view, Muhammad Abu Khudir is one of thousands of Palestinians victims. And this is the only case or one of the only cases that it was made justice, you know, because it was uh, uh, because the, the act of burning, uh, the remorse that he's gay. Uh, but from the Palestinian point of view, it's like something happening all the time. The Palestinians killed by uh, Israel army, you know, be living under occupation, and this is one of the uh, um, the problems, you know, I had at the beginning, making this uh, this uh, story. Uh, th why we start with the uh, kidnapping and killing of uh, three Israeli kids, you know, uh, because why we don't start in Hebron? What happening in he in Hebron? You know what? Uh, 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 but you know, it was the the compromise at the beginning that this is the way what we are going to do. Uh, that we start. I had the problem at the beginning, yes, to start uh, in this point. But like uh, we had like uh, this compromise that we start this story in this point. Uh, but you know, I I will have the freedom to 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 tell the Palestinian story. Uh, as I see it, you know, uh, to to bring every you know every sentence, everything, every scene that I feel it's important, because yeah, it's uh, 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 the fact it's uh, the the series is from an uh, Israeli point of view, you know, uh, it's not if you uh, look at this at the series, it's an Israeli point of view of the yeah, it's. Uh, uh, it has a, a courage uh, to have the decision, decision you know, to uh, focus on the Palestinian victim and his killers who are Jewish. But at the end, it's from uh, Israeli point of view. So uh, I need to be, you know, uh, to live under this point of view and to tell my own story, you know, my own narrative. This is, was the combination between us. Uh, and we had uh, a lot of arguments, yes, uh, because uh, at the end, you know, it's like uh, the story of, of uh, Muhammad Abu Khudir and his family. Uh, I tried to have another characters, you know, to make it big, bigger, but it was, you know, part of our, our compromise that, because, you know, it's a TV series, you can't tell everything, you need a rhythm, uh, you need a drama, you need to be, you know, uh, uh, to, to be precise. So this is, this is something you know, that I compromise with it, yes. You, you know, I mean, I, I guess this is for bo both of you. I mean, because somebody might, would view the program and think in Israeli society, when there's a, an atrocity like this, 
there's a great deal of hand wringing and a great deal of wrestling with the atrocity. And again, if you were, had only watched Our Boys, you would not say the same thing about Palestinian society. In, in Our Boys, you have the mothers of the, of the Jewish victims sympathizing with uh, Muhammad Abu Khudair's mother when, uh, when uh, he is, is missing. Why don't we see the thing that I'm sure exists, which is the, the Palestinian condemnation of these kinds of... Uh, did, you, did you think, was, was that something that you, you wished you had put in or... Uh, if you ask me, you know, I, I didn't want to put something, you know, to feel like uh, just to put it, you know, in your face. Uh, because, you know, I, uh, if you ask me, you know, I didn't find uh, the moment that it will be real thing, you know, because this is not their issue in that time. Their issue was the, their tragedy that their child was uh, taken in front of their, uh, their house you know, taking like uh, seven, uh, less than seven kilometers and burned alive. And uh, all Israel speaking about this, that he's homosexual, that his family killed them. So they, 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 they were in such a, a big tragedy that there, there was no, you know, that was so tense that it was no way, you know, to start suddenly to be, to like to be, uh, to, uh, to share the pain with other uh, families. But I can tell you that, you know, uh, Hussein and so Abu Khdair, they, they meet with the, uh, like, um, uh, how to say, Mishpachot uh, Avilot, Israel. Bereaved families. Bereaved families for Israel, you know, so it's like, but it was not part of the story that I, I, I could feel it's real, you know. But you can see Hussein, you can see Soha, you know, you, you can see Hussein that he, uh, when they speak about, with him about revenge, you know, he, he can't stand this, you know, he don't, it, it's not kind of person, he's so human, it's, you know, the, for me it was the, the, the great thing about his character, uh, uh, that he uh, kept his humanity in every situation, he didn't, lo lo you know, didn't lose his humanity. You know, even when he felt, you know, that uh, uh, at the beginning when they investigate him, that they blame him with the, of, of the murder of his, his own son, that he came to the police to, to try to understand what happened to my son and, and suddenly found himself, you know, as a, as a, as a father, they blamed him of the, of the murder of his son. So it's, he was in so complicated situation uh, that he succeeded to keep his humanity. And this is, this is what I, I think that make him, you know, a, a great character, also a great father for, for Muhammad. You know, Talfik, what you're describing just now, I think, is what gives such power to the series. And the way that, that you, that the whole team, brought this to a very personal level and delivered a message at the conclusion of the series which served the emotional needs of all of those people who were central to the story in a very personal way. And, and I want, we're going to conclude soon, but I want to take this to the times we're living in. And you know, I said at the beginning that when I watched the first episode the other night, how different it felt to me from the way that it felt a year ago before we were all in the situation that we're in now this time, this complex time of, of COVID and political challenge here in the US, but everywhere. And you know, last month when we, when we spoke about the invention of monotheism, we talked about the time of the Exodus and this idea of, of you know, refugee, climate change, refugee migration and plague. And that's somehow what enabled the invention of monotheism as a way to serve the needs of the people. And you all told in this, in this series of 10 episodes, a very powerful story that I think met the needs of a lot of people who wanted to understand not just what happened in the summer of 2014, but who wanted to get an understanding of the dynamic of conflict in the city of Jerusalem. And 
do you feel that doing something like this series can serve the needs of the people in a way? <laughs> Not that this is like the invention of monotheism, but if you tell the story, a story the way that you did, reaching the conclusions that you did, was part of your intent to help people understand. Joseph, what do you think? <clears throat> you know, when you when you work on on material that that ends up becoming a, a dramatic rendition of whether it's um, a realistic story or or some some message idea uh, notion that the artist is trying to to express um, the. You, I, at least for me, the, the goal is to push it as far as you can, take it to its most extreme point and see how the forces that exist in a certain story um, erupt into something that uh, give it meaning or we reduce it to its most basic um, nucleus. So take, taking like summer of 2014 is, is extremely complicated. There, there were, there were um, like macro processes that were happening or unfolding over that summer. And there were personal stories that were unfolding. Uh, within our characters, there are there's family dynamic, um, there, there are like mental health issues, and there are also national questions and big moral questions. That, that I think that um, at, at the end of the process, which was a four year long process, um, we found ourselves understanding something about the way we experienced this summer. I don't know if it's like objectively, if it has any objective truth, truth to it. Um, this, there's no way for me to talk about what's happening now um, while it's still happening and without going through a process that, that forces us to, to reduce it to what it is that at least we think is at the center of, 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 the, of the occurrence. So I, I don't know, I can say that at the end of the, the work on the Abu Khdir story, uh, I, I, I have a better understanding of, of how this cruel act is a reflection of, or an expression of a, an attitude, an atmosphere that exists uh, in my own life, all around me. And that's, that's uh, understanding that it is, is, is very deep, at least for me. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, I can continue and just say that, uh, you know, for me, it's also the, almost the same because what was for me is a deep understanding uh, the, that at the end, the, the public opinion killed Muhammad Abu Khadir. When you also watch the the TV, the the series, that at the end, you know, it's like uh, so. There's a lot of pressure from the politicians, from the the people, you know, that it's made, made the public op op opinion. It's like it's must to be a, re a revenge, and how it's powerful, you know, what what people uh, what people say and the atmosphere and the uh, how it can be dangerous, because at the end, you know, it's just you need this. Uh, the the guy to take uh, the action and and do it, but you have a lot of pressure of this public uh, opinion, uh, and it was you know a deep understanding which is scaring also to understand how it's very easy to happen you know in the place you live in uh, in Israel Palestine in the Middle East I believe also now in uh, a lot of places in the world you know it's like uh, you need the, this uh, uh, kind of politician, kind of leaders, you know, to take advantage of uh, uh, of a tragedy, uh, you know, to achieve uh, something, you know, in the public relation, and it can, you know, move people to to action, also to kill. You know, in saying that, you're you're just making me realize that the political dimension of the facts of the story a little bit are about how politics want to exploit stories like this. And your purpose in making the series was about 
how to serve the needs of people to understand what happened in a story like this. Uh, yeah, and this, you know, it's like um, uh, this kind of series, I believe, you know, it's, uh, uh, a lot of people, you know, can uh, criticize uh, the series, you know, from the Jewish side, from the Palestinian side, uh, because, you know, uh, if you are coming to look for what, what you are looking for, you will not find it, you know, because, uh, yeah, because at the end, you know, it's like... Uh, uh, like Joseph said at the beginning, you know, when the Israelis uh, ca coming to to watch the the the, the show, they are expecting to have you know like uh, three uh, Israel you know three Israeli kids you know was killed and uh, Palestinian murderers and suddenly they watch something else. Palestinian come to watch the the show and they expect to see the occupation the. Uh, the depression of the Palestinian, and they just see the focusing of only this case. So you can't satisfy everybody. You can't give the needs of everybody. But I believe, you know, it's, uh, when you when you are telling a good story, uh, you know, without connection of politics, when you are telling a good story, like uh, it's like uh, 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 one of the motives of this uh, show. It's like. Uh, relation between uh, father and son or fathers and sons when you're telling a good story with the you know uh, with good characters that you, uh, you can understand but if you don't identify at, at least understand them i believe it will reach to everybody you know so this is this is what's important yes for, last question for both of you how did the experience of our boys how does the experience of our boys affect what you're working on now you're both working on new projects. Uh, uh, it's how it's effect. Uh, I don't know yet, but I, I thought that our boys is the, the, was the most uh, difficult. But you know, every TV working is uh, it's difficult. <laughs> so uh, you know, for me, it was like uh, uh, it's to. Uh, to have like experience in the medium of TV, but it's uh, this is uh, you know, and to have uh, a new friend like Joseph, but uh... which I'm sure is very special, Joseph. <laughs> this was the first time I collaborated with other writers and and directors, and while while it was happening, it was hell. Um, I, I I couldn't stop uh, complaining about the lack of control and how perfectly great scenes are being ruined because I have to be considerate of my collaborators. Uh, but I found myself, and maybe not, not, by, not by a conscious decision, um, everything I'm doing now has collaborators. So I, I, <laughs> that's, pro that's probably a, a result of, of this experience, which turned out to be significant, even though while it was happening, it was incre incredibly frustrating. It's a good result. Tarek, I think we'll turn this over to you now. So we should turn this over to our audience. I know that they will want to ask you uh, both some questions. And so uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, let you know how to do that. Um, if you uh, raise your hand, and you can raise your hand in Zoom by clicking on the participants icon at the bottom of the screen, that will pull up a menu on the right hand of the screen and you can click raise hand. And then I'll, I'll call on you in, which the, in the order in which your hands are raised. And uh, just one thing, if you do ask a question and you, you, um, should be, uh, you should know that your video and voice will be recorded and this will be released uh, on some streaming platform. So if you're asking a question, you're consenting to that uh, happening. So while people are, uh, ginning up the courage to ask uh, questions. May, may I ask a question that I ask of every uh, Israeli and Palestinian that I encounter? And, uh, and, and it's, it's basically, I, I want to ask of each of you, and maybe Joseph can start and then Taufi. In your dream scenario, in your dream, in your wildest dreams or your most... Um, wonderful dreams. How does the conflict between your two people end? What is the, the way in which you wish that conflict would end? 
And then, then I have a follow-up question on that, but I'm really interested in first just getting a sense of whether each of you has a, a, a wish for how this would come, come to an end. Sophie, go, go first. Uh, I thought I explicitly said Joseph should go first. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you, like you ask uh, my opinion, what, what's the solution? Yeah. How do you want it to end? I, I want it to, I, I don't, you know, I believe that the realistic way to end, it's like to have uh, the problem for me that the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, they, that they don't vote in Israel. It should be one country, the two people living in this country, there is no other solution because they are combined to each other. You can just all the time uh, uh, fight for ideals that, because you need to live the life and to live the life, it's like to, to be citizen and to have the equal uh, opportunities for everybody. So for me, it's the, the ideal thing, it's, uh, it's to have uh, one country that everybody live in the, in the same place, have the same uh, 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 rights and they can vote and they can decide their own destiny. So this is how, how I see it. Joseph. Yeah, so um, it's funny. What, uh, I'm working on a project that takes place in 1947 now. And, um, you know, the, there, there are basically three options for, for if, if you, if you reduce, reduce it to very simple solutions, right? It's a one state, two state, or a situation where one of these nationalities isn't around. So in 1947, um, the different committees that, that came, came to the region uh, ended up deciding on the partition, the two state. Now, 73 or 74 years later, it seems like more and more people think that the one state is possible. Uh, the option though, that either the Jews disappear or the Arabs disappear seems to be off the table. So that is some, in some way progress, but I, I I, I can't answer that question as a storyteller. As a, uh, I like, I uh, there, there's you know if you if you think of this as a fictional story, not as a real story, uh -huh. then the next act seems pretty clear to me. But it's not a good act for the Jewish side. It's not it, there's the you know if there was if we were creating a fictional story about a character who who's about in his 80s now. Who came, who like, who, who survived the Holocaust, came to Israel right before the state was created, fought against the British mandate, then fought against the Arabs in all the wars, and saw what happened to the Zionist movement. Story of great, great success. Like it's it's a story of someone who rose from the ashes, and with great obstacles along the way, ended up becoming an extremely rich and powerful character, living in a rich and powerful culture and, and a rich and powerful country. But how many good stories end at that point? Like there, there, if, if you would have stopped the Harvey Weinstein story uh, in 1995, that wouldn't have been the story where he's the most like uh, celebrated producer in the world. Gaining power and abusing that power is, there's a, there's a moral meaning to that. And Israel is now facing that part of, of its story. So I, do, I, I, I have wishes for compassion and for, for an understanding of how to use our, our tremendous privilege right now. And the, and the, the success of the Zionist movement is, 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 a, is an obligation for those who are enjoying this success to, to act differently than what Israel is currently um, implementing so that that's 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 my hope but it's I, I don't i don't think it's a good end for anyone you know, it sounds though i mean that's that's a fascinating answer and we could uh you know spend a lot of time diving into both of your answers but it sounds like where both of you meet is that neither of you envisions a future in which you're not living with the other you know what when before we we got on this uh, uh we before we uh, uh joined the audience uh you and and uh, Taufi, uh, joseph you and Taufi were both speaking in hebrew to each other 
and that to me as an as a, a you know sort of a, a, an american of egyptian extraction was a dramatic demonstration of of how much is shared now between at least the palestinian inhabitants of israel and the and the jewish inhabitants of israel and um you know, I, I think, you know, so I guess my, my second follow-up question, and then I really do hope some uh, members of our audience who are deeply engaged will, will ask a question, but, um, you know, does, does your art, when, when you choose to make a, a, a film or a, a television program, is that even if subconsciously in the service of furthering this end state that you wish to... Uh, you wish your peoples would achieve? And I guess Delphi, because you expressed the clearest uh, kind of sense of, of the end state, is, is your work in some way trying to get people closer uh, to that? Uh, I, I don't believe, you know, I, I am doing it directly because uh, I, I don't believe that it's, uh, you know, uh, art, uh, cinema or television is like, uh, it's a historical paper or, or uh, you know, it's, it's just an art to make people think, to move people. Uh, at the end, you know, I believe in, in personal relation because people don't know, don't know really each other. This is, this is what I, 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 you know, I'm trying to tell at the end because everything for me is human, you know. Even uh, it's so powerful to look at your enemy, at your murderer, in a human way, you know, to humanize him. Because when you humanize your enemy, actually you humanize yourself. So this is, this is the, you know, my point of view. I don't know if I succeed to, uh, uh, to achieve it in my, in my work, but, you know, this is what I really believe. Uh, because what prevent people, uh, what you know, to uh, believe in each other, to uh, uh, to give a trust to each other because they don't really know each other. The, there is something, you know, prevent them from to, to uh, uh, you know, like I can imagine that there is a so human stories you can find between settlers and Palestinians, you know, for sure. You know, you are usually looking at the news that you are, you know, their enemies are fighting, that, you know, they hate each other. But I'm sure and I know about these stories that you can find. So for me, it's the, the, to humanize every moment, to humanize every situation, it's, it's my work. You know, this is what I, I aim to, 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 be, to have it as my work. Wonderful. Joseph, did you have uh, something on this? And then we have a couple of hands up. If you, if you put a, a full human being on the screen, and allow an audience to identify with their pain, uh, their struggles. Uh, I think you're you're doing something that contributes to our to to add more compassion to the world. That's that's as far as any I think any story can go. Uh, and that I I, I I don't know any sto storyteller, good storyteller who isn't working in the service of that. Uh, there are of course uh, more cynical. Stories that are out that in this are in the service of something more institutionalized, but uh, serious storytellers do that. They allow an audience to identify with a subjective um, struggle, and that that is, I think, just a, a pure and absolute good contribution to the world. Well, a pure and absolute good contribution to the world is how I would d d describe uh, our boys. I mean, there is not a moment of cynicism in that, and, and that's really a great credit to you and to Taufi. Okay, I have uh, a couple of questions, and then we'll probably wrap up, James, maybe afterward, you, you'll say a few uh, words to bring this to a close. The first is from uh, Yusuf Zaim, a Kennedy School alumnus uh, from Gaza, actually. Go ahead, Yusuf. Um, um. So, um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm glad to be part of this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, and my question actually to Joseph and to both of you, um, you, what you're doing guys is uh, actually amazing, but how are you dealing? And, and I heard you discussing and talking about your vision and uh, your ideas of you know, how to deal with um, each other. But 
um, since you are in, in such cooper, cooper, cooperation and such amazing project, I would assume that you faced some opponent voices from your own people. How did you de uh, deal with these voices? Um, and I would love to hear about your experience in this. Uh, secondly, um, as a Gazan who uh, actually witnessed the 2014 war and all what happened uh, 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 while I was in Gaza with my family and my daughters, um, I would like to hear more of how, how did you look at Gaza uh, in your project? Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you. Uh, I, I start to... Yeah, go, okay. go ahead, please. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, you ask about the pressure, uh, like uh, if I can understand the pressure I face from the Palestinian. It was, it was a huge pressure. Uh, like uh, I, uh, sometimes I, I, I thought I can't stand it because I had the phones from everywhere. Uh, like uh, uh, from uh, activists, from journalists, uh, people keep calling me all the time. It was, uh, you know, a threat to treat me, but you know, like uh, not in a personal way, you know, like uh, it's not good for, for you. It will kill your career. It will kill all your relationship. Uh, and it's, uh, also, it was a huge pressure on Hussein Abu Khdair himself. I can say that uh, it started with an article in a, in a Palestinian newspaper, a local uh, newspaper in Jerusalem. Uh, don't let them burn Muhammad Abu Khdair again. Mm. Like they're blaming us that doing this series that we are going, you know, it's, I can't just uh, say, say it again. So uh, also from uh, uh, from the BDS, you know, I I had also a, a, a talking with BDS because you know they approached me asking what you are doing. Uh, at the end, you know, I, I just uh, I decided to be honest to tell to tell them that this is what I'm doing. I believe in it. Of what, what it's it's uh, this is the the opportunity, you know, to tell the Palestinian story because. Uh, what, what's unique about this uh, TV series for me, what's, what's unique is the first time that you see a Palestinian tragedy on uh, in a, a world platform. You spoke about, you know, another uh, uh, Israeli TV series. You, uh, all the time you have the Palestinians or a terrorist or a collaborators. You, you don't see, you never see, you, you didn't see the Palestinian tragedy, the Palestinian uh, family, the Palestinian story. So for me, I was confident what, what, of what I am doing. Uh, but at the end, you know, it's, uh, I, I can't satisfy everybody. And most of people against the series, they didn't really watch it, watch the series. And I can say that a lot of people who watch the series Palestinian, they are really surprised that it's... Uh, they are surprised that it's American production, not Israeli production. You know, for them, it's uh, you know to 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 have uh, uh, American uh, production telling a story like this. This is what was shocking. So, uh, uh, so you know, for me, it was like uh, at the beginning, before making the show, it was a huge pressure. Uh, after the show, it was a relief. I I believe uh, Joseph was the opposite. You know, Joseph and Haggai had uh, the opposite because they had the the relief during making the show and they have the pressure after the show was done. And if you ask me about Gaza, what I feel about Gaza, it was a big fight. Uh, in the uh, big fight, you know, to, uh, uh, because you can't ignore that uh, thousands of Palestinians were killed during 50 days, you know, and it was uh, a big issue between us how to uh, present the tragedy in Gaza. Uh, and uh, you know uh, we we couldn't you know uh, bring the the all the picture, but at the end we have in, in, in the series we have uh, at least images uh, showing what's happening in Gaza. Not the whole image. It was also a big fighting between us because I I really wanted uh, to at the, uh, you know at least to tell the what happened in Gaza. 
but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's also one of the what called compromises because it's not the, the serious, it's personal. Uh, but this is what I felt, yeah, it's, uh, that it was a, a huge tragedy of like more than 2,000 Palestinians were killed in 50 days. Uh, and it's, you know, it was like uh, a, 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 maybe a big story than the story that we are telling, you know, because it's, it's really a, 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 a big war with, you know, with a huge tragedy happening there. Did you, did you, uh, Joseph, want to ch chime in on the either of the two questions that Yusuf asked about the? You spoke about the the pressure you received in in Israel. Did you want to just speak about the artistic choices about how you uh, linked uh, Gaza's 2014 war to the events in the series? Well, th what what Taufik was describing is something that we were concerned with as well. Uh, how how wide can the scope be? without losing, without it weighing it down uh, and losing the, the dramatic and emotional effect. So some, some of our considerations were political and I think Taufik had to fight for his point of view. At the end, what determined most of our decisions was, was what determines decisions in any editing process. Is this, is this emotionally effective? Is it concise? Is it, is it entertaining in a way? Um, yeah. Well, okay. So the, but, but also, I mean, it had to be true, right? I mean, there, there was no departures you, from the. That's the, the way I, I think for all of us, the way to deal with our, um, with our critics was to say, you know, it's hard to say something is absolutely true. And, and after working on this story, we know this from the inside, there really are competing narratives and there, there is no, there is no absolute truth to, to these events. Even when you get close to it, like we have a we have a court situation where a judge is really deciphering all these contradicting details, it's very hard to reach a, a clear, nuanced uh, truism. But our ability to deal with our critics comes with um, our own confidence that what we're putting on screen is as close as we could possibly get to a truth, and it, it reflects our tremendous effort to do something that is not exploitive, not provocative for just the sake of provocation, provocation that is, is, is sincere in our intentions. And when that's true, even when we're criticized, um, we can go to sleep at night. Right. Not always, but it, it, that knowing, that, knowing that our intentions were serious and our efforts were relentless helps, helps fall asleep at night. Okay, we have time for one more question, and that will be from uh, Hagai Weiss, who is a pre-doctoral fellow at the Middle East Initiative. Uh, and I think I need to tell, oh, there you go. Awesome. Oh, great. Hi, Joseph, and hi, Tofik. Thanks so much. Hi. And hi, James and Tarek and everyone else. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to thank uh, you both. So I grew up in Jerusalem, and I was an undergraduate student at Hebrew University at the summer of 2014. And this was kind of one of the most impressionable uh, periods of time that really got me interested in trying to understand how groups can live together. Um, and I recall like rewatching the HBO show and getting a true sense that this, that the show really spoke to, to, to the events and to the summer and to what Jerusalem is in, in many ways. And kind of the question that I have relates to Jerusalem. And I was curious to know whether you think that like, there's something unique about Jerusalem which facilitated these tragic events and whether there's something unique about Jerusalem that could also kind of like, you know, alleviate the pain of these events and, 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 and kind of ensure that, that, that future, future events like this don't happen in Jerusalem. Um, so I guess it's kind of an open and broad question, but I would be curious to hear your thoughts about it. I can say just one observation that we had while we're, obviously this is a very, um, this, this is as Jerusalem might as it gets in terms of, of uh, br bringing the tensions in Jerusalem to, uh, to this horrific boiling point. Um, one, of the, one of the observations we found while working is that what happened here is that the two weakest populations in Jerusalem end up killing each other. Um, and the murderers come from, uh, they're ultra-Orthodox, Moroccan 
youngsters who, who didn't find their way in the mainstream uh, ultra-Orthodox schooling system. Uh, relatively poor families who, who, have, who, who, who don't belong to any uh, institutionalized Israel. They, Israel. They, don't, they don't serve in the army. They don't feel, they don't feel like this is, um, they don't feel at home in some way. And this, of course, uh, Palestinians or uh, living in Jerusalem have that same feeling. Are the institutions, the city institutions, theirs or not? So this is a story about these two um, under, underserved populations ending up being the most extreme in, in their politics and expressing this uh, these politics in the most cruel and, and terrible way, and that's like that. that that's a tragedy of the, of the city. Uh, yeah, I oh, oh, I agree what uh, Joseph said. That for, you know, from I'm, I'm not, I didn't raise in Jerusalem, so I, I it's like uh, I I look at you know, as a stranger came from outside. For but for me, it's uh, uh, I don't like Jerusalem. It's like an unhappy place for me because this is the place that you see the tension all the time. Uh, for me, you know, as Palestinian, if, uh, if we speak like about Palestinians inside Israel, Palestinians in, in the West Bank and Jerusalem, I don't speak about Gaza because it's, uh, they have their own tragedy, but three kind of Palestinians, for me, it's the, the most difficult to be a Palestinian in Jerusalem. And it's uh, 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 the fact that you see that there is a lot of immigration out of Jerusalem of Palestinians in the last decades because it's a lot of pressure to live there because of the system, of the bureaucracy. What they are doing to Palestinians just to make their life so hard that they can't live there anymore. So for me, it was the, the most uh, you know, powerful feeling of looking at the city, this, this, this pressure that people living uh, under and they are, uh, uh, so the city is like, uh, you need just uh, uh, a little fire, you know, and it's hot, uh, a spark, and everything will, will explore, you know. You feel it in Jerusalem, in the street you feel it, you know, just you need something very small and everything is explore because of the tension that the city living in. Wonderful. So, so I, I think we are now on this fairly downbeat note, um, and there are a lot of great things in, in Jerusalem, and you, you, you know, James Snyder can attest to them, but I, I certainly also have that feeling whenever I'm in that incredible city. There's an exhilaration and a deep sadness at what humans are, are capable of doing to each other. But uh, James? <laughs> you know, Tarek, it's funny, you thought that was downbeat. I found Haggai's question and Joseph and Taufik's answer so moving because they're exactly to the point of why making a project like Our Boys was so challenging and at the same time monumental and meaningful and why the conversation that we've just had has been so beneficial. Because what these folks did was use honesty and sensitivity to tell a very complex story. And instead of beating their heads against a wall of political conflict by personalizing it, it allowed the message to come out with humanity and empathy. Jerusalem is a really difficult and challenging place. <laughs> I know that I'm talking to some of those who know how much I feel it might also be a place that can lead us on the right path forward if we take the right approach to what is possible there. And that's why a conversation like this for me doesn't end on a low note, it actually ends on a high one. And I just want to thank Taufik for staying up until <laughs> almost two in the morning to be with yeah. us. We really, we really appreciate your doing this. And Joseph, thank you as well. 
And Tarek, it's a pleasure always to do these things together with you. James, I cannot exaggerate uh, how welcome your expansion of our intellectual and cultural horizons at uh, Harvard has been. And just the opportunity to engage with you and with these two extraordinary filmmakers has just really been tremendous. And I hope we'll, we'll do this again. Thank you. Okay, inshallah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Tawfiq. Thank, Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Tisbah al khair. Tisbah And everybody, thank you for joining us. And the series is Our Boys on HBO. And we very much encourage you to see it if you haven't already. Until next time.